And everyone, uh, we are being recorded. The meeting is being recorded. And we're live right now. <laughs> Am I live enough? Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere. So this is our annual uh, retiree reception. And thank you all, uh, so many for coming out, friends and families of our retirees. It's always a very special evening. And it's certainly my honor to recognize our retirees this evening. They join what we always refer to as a very prestigious group of retired Lunenburg Public School employees. When added together, this year our employees have 180 years of service to our students, the schools, and community. It is my hope, it is the hope of all of us, that, they, that the benefit our children derived from their dedication, their compassion, and their hard work is repaid tenfold in kind to them with a long, happy, and very healthy retirement. And I know those retirements will be sprinkled with memories of successful careers of making a difference for children. On behalf of our school community, I extend to each of them our heartfelt thanks and sincere appreciation for their service to the Lundberg Public Schools. And so I'm going to call each one of our retirees that's able to be with us tonight up and tell you a little bit about them. And then we have some guests to present to them. Um, and uh, they might have a few words to say as well. And we're going to start with Mrs. Ford, Mrs. Mary Beth Ford. Welcome and thank you, Mary Beth. Thank you. You know how much we have appreciated all the joy that you brought to our students for 33 years of service. She, Mrs. Ford began her service to the students of Lunenburg in April of 1985. And, and at that time, she was a part-time paraprofessional in the kindergarten and preschool programs. And then, in the fall of 1986, she was appointed as a music teacher at Thomas E. Passios. And Mrs. Ford continued throughout the, uh, that period of time to be both the, uh, the teacher, the music teacher and instruction instructor at the primary and elementary, and also served the chorus, because you did chorus after school at both the elementary and the middle school as well. And I had the great fortune of uh, being here when Mrs. Ford was doing music, was still a music teacher, um, and uh, her performances were just something to marvel at. And I, I was always so impressed with the productions and the students were always uh, gave some of the most amazing uh, performances and were always so attentive to Mrs. Ford. And she rolled right into a part-time music instructor and kindergarten uh, teacher then for one year until we went to full-time kindergarten. So that was about in the year 2007 when you were split between music and kindergarten, right Mary Beth? Yes. And then in 2008, uh, went full-time as a kindergarten teacher. Now we have a special picture and a frame that says thank you for your dedication and it's Mrs. Ford in her kindergarten classroom with her guitar um, uh, with her students and so uh, she'll look on that and I know that there's many fond memories of all those wonderful children that she brought such enthusiasm to, to the classroom and using her many talents here and there. Um, Mrs. Ford, I always want, uh, also want you to know, served in various leadership roles, including curriculum task forces. She was on the kindergarten self-study team and uh, the building leadership teams. And she worked uh, very diligently uh, just uh, in the last couple of years on the standard-based uh, report card revision as well. Mrs. Ford tells us her future plans is that she's going to start her retirement by enjoying the summer and uh, doing some jobs around the house that uh, you're going to tackle, maybe some that have been set aside for a while, and spending lots of time with her family and friends is her top priority. She and her husband love to travel, so they're planning to visit many new places in the coming years. They have a trip to Ireland already booked for the fall, and in the late winter, we'll be in Antigua. So that travel is starting. After break, after a break from working, she anticipates Bates being ready to try some new, perhaps part-time employment or volunteering. So 
Thank you so much, Mary Beth, for all you've done for our students and the joy that you've brought not only to those children, but to all of us as the adults who were able to watch those performances and watch you in the classroom. Thank you. Congratulations. Move this over here to make sure. First of all, thank you, Loxie, for your very kind words. My 33 years of teaching in the town of Lunenburg have been very rewarding, and it has been a privilege serving the families of Lunenburg. I have had the pleasure of working with thousands of students in my positions as music teacher and kindergarten teacher, and these special children have enriched my life and brought me countless moments of joy. I have also been very fortunate to work with an amazing staff of talented, hardworking teachers who truly care about their students and our schools. I am proud that I had the opportunity to work alongside such wonderful, dedicated professionals. I will miss working with the administrators, teachers, staff, and students in Lunenburg. Thank you very much for the opportunity to serve in the Lunenburg Public Schools. Next, I'd like to ask Elaine Lacedale, Jill, to come up and join us. Jill has 31 years of service to the Lunenburg Public Schools. Jill was hired in 1987, and she started working with 7th and 8th grade resource room uh, in the resource room as a teacher there. Her professional work included um, doing reading assessment task forces. She was the process coordinator. She was on the eligibility task force and also served as a mentor. She was very active as a teacher doing after school activities, a uh, very popular ski program, homework club, that one was, was real popular too, I'm sure, <laughs> talent show. Um, she served as MCAS prep coordinator and during the early years of the MCAS and uh, coordinated the special education summer school and uh, taught in the special education st summer school or extended school year. She facilitated and delivered several workshops shops and all of these Jill's focus really on her career has been on inclusion and broadening the opportunities for students with disabilities and all students she uh, did a workshop called diversity on common ground she did early learning education best practices reaching and teaching the reluctant learner with just uh, the name of a few of the workshops that she provided she was a member of the Fitchburg State College graduate and continuing education education faculty pool and in February 10th 2003 she was appointed interim manager of special education and on August 1st 2003 appointed as the student services coordinator in 2012 she was uh, and 13 she was the interim principal and then appointed principal to the primary school and inclusive practices and emotional intelligence has been her focus, has continued there, working with her staff and doing such great work. She's been steadfast advocate for children, her faculty, and the staff. And Jill says her future plans include caring for her grandsons two days per week, spending time with her parents, and she and her husband also plan to travel after he retires. Congratulations and thank you, Jill. I did write up something because I can't come to a school committee and she not never speak. <laughs> she likes to speak to us. Okay, and um, I'm always um, teased by the other administrators that I need to keep it brief. Yeah, look, they're up there sure, right now. Sure, right now, short. Okay. Um, it's been a pleasure to serve the Lunenburg community of learners for 31 years. I am fortunate to have been able to spend a, a long, um, as long of a time as I have in one place. 
who knew when I started the special education teacher in the Turkey Hill Middle School in 1987 as a resource room teacher for grades seven and eight, I would come to wear so many hats and be afforded so many opportunities to take on leadership roles. I am grateful to have worked with so many dedicated, hardworking teachers and support staff and to be part of a supportive um, leadership team. I would especially like to thank Superintendent Combs for sharing her expertise and guidance over these many years. She is a skilled leader, mentor, educator, and professional, and she taught me so many things um, through her work. She taught me the importance of kindness, grace, and empathy in the face of adversity. When tempers were high or individuals were upset, she listened, pondered, and then worked to resolve the conflict in whichever way was best and benefited our students. Her tenure here as a superintendent was remarkable and moved her district into the 21st century. She has assisted us in producing some remarkable human beings. I am proud to have served as a teacher under her direction and then as an administrator alongside of her. I wish her the greatest joy in her retirement. That wasn't about you at all. I know. <laughs> additionally, 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 of course, there's more. <laughs> Um, I would like to thank the staff, the students, and the parents that have had the ple that I've had the pleasure of working with over these past five years at the Lunenburg Primary School. We have a great village. Um, it's a loving, caring community of teachers, parents, and children, and we've worked really hard to learn and grow together. I am so proud to have worked with all of them. I will truly miss the children. They make me smile and laugh every day. It's pretty amazing some of the things that they come up with. And I will need to write a book, I think. Yes. Yes. Um, finally, I would like to thank the school committee for your support over these last few years. I could leave you with one thought or guidance to keep in mind over these next several years as you do your work. Our students need your support and attention most in the beginning of their educational career. The focus of the primary needs to be kept on developing the whole child. Teachers and parents need your continued support in acquiring the resources necessary Don't to do that well. The money's <laughs> money. Thank you very much for all of your support. Thank you, Jill. Mrs. Byrie, Ms. Jeanette Byrie, 31 years of service. Mrs. Byrie was appointed in August 1987, and at that time she came in as an afternoon preschool aide. In the letter of appointment, the principal noted, Mrs. Byrie is a Lunenburg resident and parent who has been actively involved in volunteer work for the past several years. So now we're going to pay her to do this <laughs> job. <laughs> she ha ha holds a bachelor's degree. You didn't have it. You already, you still do hold it, right? You still have that bachelor's degree, and you've been involved in home daycare and other preschool activities. You continued as a paraprofessional working with our youngest children to this day, and it would be difficult, very difficult, to find a more dedicated, dependable, and caring individual. As an example of her dedication, I want you to know that I also found a letter from Jeanette to a former superintendent volunteering to take a week of unpaid furlough, but planning to come to work during that time regardless, so the classroom would not be short-staffed. That's the dedication that Jeanette had shown time and time again to the students of this district. She worked the extended year program for many years and participated in many professional development opportunities to keep her skills fine-tuned. Her future plans, she says, are doing a lot of what she's been doing already, spending time with her family and friends, traveling and enjoying her place on Hickory Hills Lake. Since her three children and nine, soon to be ten, 
grandchildren live in Lunenburg. The family is close at hand and travel is easier when not tied to the school calendar. She hopes to find more time to read and there are some projects, she says, around the house, which she plans to jump into, that have been put aside for several years. <laughs> Jeanette, thank you for everything that you've done for our students and for the privilege of working with you these many years. Congratulations. Um, you have so. Well, I have a daughter who has no problem getting behind a microphone. She can talk forever. That is not <laughs> my comfort zone. If I was looking at three, four, and five-year-olds, I'd be fine. I could even dance up here. Um, but I do want to thank all the parents I've had the privilege of getting to know and all the children and the families. Um, last night, I was watching the selectmen's meeting at home, and they appointed uh, Sam Christensen to a reserve police officer. Well, I remember when Sam started preschool. He wouldn't leave his mother's side. He kicked and cried. And I could only lure him away with some little plastic animals. And now I look at him and he's going to be protecting us. Um, and there's just so many stories. And like Jill said, I should have written a book. Maybe we can collaborate and get together on that. Um, my, one of my grandsons, Sean, um, said, my mama said, you're retiring. And I asked him, what, 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 what does that mean? He goes, there won't be a Mrs. Byrie anymore. Oh. And I shed a tear. It's just like, oh. You know, because that's what sort of become my identity. Currently, I have five of my grandchildren in the primary school. And they do call me Mrs. Byrie unless they have a slip up. And uh, so it's going to be a difficult transition. And I just wanted to end with one little story. Many of the, the young children think that perhaps teachers lived all together and sleep <laughs> at the primary school. And last summer I went into the Lunenburg Public Library to attend an event that my grandchildren were attending and uh, a little preschooler circled me and he said, where are Mrs. Flynn and, and, and Mrs. McCall? And I said, well, well they're at their homes for the summer. Um, he said, and he, he hesitated for a little bit and he said, so you live at the library for the summer? <laughs> And I, those are the kind of things that I wish I had, I, I will write down because it, they're just so precious. And it's been fun to watch the children um, go through the system. My own children, grandchildren, being able to follow students as they, through the newspaper, um, you know, athletic events, and watch them grow up and then bring their children back to the preschool. And many of the people here, I've had their children <laughs> in preschool, including Mrs. Blaisdell's twins in 1987, um, the year I started as well. And yeah. yours, yeah. So again, thank you everybody for giving me the privilege to work with your children. Deborah Prince Smith, if you can join us up here, Deborah. Welcome. Congratulations. Deborah was hired as a music teacher at TCP in August 2007, and she's worked there full or part time at the TCP or the primary, and most recently at Turkey Hill Elementary School. She's been a member of our curriculum task forces, taught recorder karate after school, and was instrumental in bringing the Af African Culture and Arts program to Lunenburg. Just amazing opportunities for our students. You, um, I would had the the wonderful opportunity to go um, see the Carnival of Animals, which was an amazing production that the elementary school uh, students put on last week, and we really appreciate the time and effort that you devoted to helping those students prepare for that. They did a, a great job. Mrs. Smith has worked closely with her district colleagues and she's attended uh, the music performances of her colleagues and she's also played in the pit for our musicals as well. So she's been very active here. And I know that uh, Deborah has also taught music, um, piano and private lessons for over 30 years at this point in time and has um, some other talents as, as a visual artist as well. Um, so I was going to read Read your future plans, uh, Deborah. But perhaps I just hand you the mic and let you talk about that because um, it was such a lovely story of uh, tapping into another creative uh, part of you. So 
can I do that? Can you sure. Talk about that? That. Sing them. Oh, no, it's a Well, no. oh. <laughs> don't tempt me. Um, I, I don't have the long history with, in Lunenburg that some of the people have. Um, Mary Beth was my mentor when I started teaching. Um, so I've sort of done a number of different things. And what I'm doing is going back to one of the careers that I used to have as a visual artist and book illustrator. So I, two and a half years ago, got back into drawing with pastels, which are, that's the, the, the medium that I love. And I'm looking forward to doing more drawing and art and get back into that. Not that I won't be doing music still, but. So I have loved, I see kids out here that, you know, they're my buddies I, when we see each other at the grocery store. So how about, would you join me in everybody you know this song? Ready? Hot cross buns, sing, come on. Hot cross buns, hot cross buns, one a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. So music's for everybody. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. That's been hard every day. Every single day. The Volvo goes by. Congratulations. Come down here. I uh, just wanted to acknowledge a couple of other retirees who unfortunately weren't able to join us, already with, busy with their uh, schedules and future plans. Um, Ms. Anna Keegan, you know that Mrs. Keegan is uh, retiring after teaching uh, what she describes as 18 rewarding years at Lunenburg High School. Um, she's right now out of town grading national AP exams. But she doesn't plan on retiring from the field of education. Her immediate plans include working as a consultant for the College Board AP program, venturing into the area of educational consulting, and keeping in contact with students through various volunteer programs here and abroad. Ms. Keegan plans to spend time pursuing her interests also in tennis, golf, and skiing, as well as gardening, cooking, and of course, enjoying time with her family and friends. And we certainly met, wish Ms. Keegan all the best. Also, with 12 years of service, uh, Ms. Don McWorld was a paraprofessional primarily at the high school level, but also at the middle school level. She taught uh, many summers as an extended school year paraprofessional, and she's right now, she retired in March and she's taking care of her new granddaughter spending time with her family and working part-time and we also wanted to acknowledge Ed Wilkins Ed has been with our maintenance department for two years now and he's made many contributions to Mr. Londa's teams and the district and how everything looks and works within the district we were happy to have him for these two years and he shared with me that he and his wife recently downsized to a small home in Hubbardston the house evidently needs extensive renovations, so that's going to be his new job, he said, for the next few months at least. And after that, they hope to have time to travel and spend time with their granddaughter. So I just want to also acknowledge and ask you to acknowledge these retirees from our system. So, so, okay. so I'm, I'm just going to take a moment to um, thank our superintendent, Com Foxy Joe, for her years of dedication to the students of Lunenburg Public School District. She has been an important team player since her hire date of July 1st, 1997. Correct? Correct. When she took on the role of Special Ed Director and Structural <laughs> Service Director. Um, I have a few fun facts <laughs> about Superintendent Combs because this is not going to be a cry fest for me. <laughs> she grew up in Guernsey, Wyoming. That's correct. She used to take off on horseback to her grandparents' home about a day's ride away. Actually, that was my mother, but. <laughs> oh, that was your mother? Oh, okay. She worked in Evanston, Wyoming, Wyoming and received her bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin. No, University of Wyoming. Why do they, th this is the facts they give me. <laughs> I have, fun facts are not fun when they're given wrong. She received her, did, is this correct? You received your master's degree from Utah State University? That's correct. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> her husband, Charlie, is also, he's a kindergarten teacher who is also retiring this year. That is correct. <laughs> she has two sons, Silas and Stefan, both now living in Massachusetts. That is correct. She has two grandchildren, Max and Liv, Liv, who was born on May 3rd, 9th, 2018. 
Month old. Month old. Yeah. She has a beagle named Suki, <laughs> who Suki. she adores. Is that true? That is true. But <laughs> Suki loves to run away from you into the woods. Is that true? <laughs> but Suki always comes back. She does. Thank God. Um, you recently got a condo in Grantham. True. Where you like to hike and get away from Lunaburg. So. Yes. <laughs> Um, your favorite candy is Good and Plenty. Is that, that true? That is still do you, true. Do you yes. drink? Do you eat that with the wine that is red? The favorite wine is red. Okay. <laughs> and we thank you so much for your service thank you. and your partnership with the school committee. Thank you. Um, and so we will. I don't want to cry. So let's not cry. No, it's let's not cry. Right. No. What? No, it's a joyous time. Yeah, <laughs> say it enough times this was just such an amazing experience for me it was it was fate that brought me to Lunenburg because I was looking for a position where uh, I was very concerned about how separate education systems were developing for students with uh, disabilities and other students and Lunenburg being Lunenburg offered this position that combined a curriculum coordinator's position with a special ed director's position. It was like perfect. So coming out of the University of Utah, I said, that's the job for me. And it was back um, in an area where my husband grew up. So uh, I came to Lunenburg, and then uh, you all know the rest of the story from there in terms of having the opportunity during a really dark period for our district of uh, being able to help everyone move through that and reestablishing uh, the integrity of, of our, our school department. And I just had uh, um, the, the teams, the administrators, the teachers I've had the opportunity to work with, I've learned so much for, from. Um, I've had the distinct opportunity to work with school committees who are so committed to children and work so hard. and. I keep, I, I always said to them, you know, I get paid for doing this job. You guys all volunteer. Um, and it's quite remarkable to me uh, just what an important part of public education are our community boards and how we need to make sure that we show our appreciation to the people that are doing this work as volunteers um, because they are there to help us have a system that really addresses the needs of children. And so we're lucky to have that involvement that we've had, just marvelous people that have served on, on the boards. And um, I am most proud um, of the work that we've done together, all of us. There's been times when we've had conflict, um, no doubt. Um, but, uh, you know, we haven't let that stop us from doing what we needed to do for children. Uh, so we mended fences, we uh, talked, we uh, regained um, our conversation being a respectful and, and uh, civil one with each other. We modeled that, I hope, for our, our, our students so they could see how that works. Um, and we keep growing. And I know the future of this district is bright because you have wonderful teachers, you have fabulous children that you share with us, um, and it's a community that believes in education and knows the importance of education. And it's been my greatest privilege uh, to be able to serve. So I thank everyone. And uh, for those that need to, um, at this point in time, we will take it just a minute to let you exit if that's um, where you're at in your space at this time, and then we'll continue. Did you all that? Make sure make I sure. did. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. I'm so used to being the last one on the one list. I signed as the last one on the list. You know, I don't know where Wisconsin <laughs> came in. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. That's okay. That's right. Yeah, it was because fine. Because I didn't want yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay.
No, I didn't expect it. Thank All right. you. Thank 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 you. I think I saw Mrs. Wardwell. Mrs. Wardwell and Stephen? Yes, they're here. They're here. Anna and Stephen are here. Hold on, there it is. Well, that's about right. Oh, who's all this? I tried to do it in a half an hour. Goodness. It's that time. It's that time. I done sketch. Well, I think I will just bypass my report because it's really part of the new business and the appointment of the superintendent. So we'll just go into. We have warrants on the table to approve. Yes. I'm delinquent with the warrants. You are delinquent. I gotta catch up. They're in process. We right? have minutes to approve. Those were sent out. <laughs> yes, those were sent out earlier. Yes. So I'll take yes. a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the special meeting minutes for May 31st, 2018 and June 5th, 2018. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then it's the superintendent's report. Yes. And I'm so excited to have two of our students and graduates uh, with yeah, us. Um, right. uh, and Mrs. Wardwell is here as well. Thank you, Mrs. Wardwell, uh, for coming out on yet another night uh, to be with us and, and to support the students. But uh, they're here to share their experience around the Nashville music trip that uh, was completed about um, three weeks ago now. No, April-ish, right? April. Uh, okay. So please, Stephen and Anna and Mrs. Wardwell, come up, please. And thank you for taking time out of your schedules to do this. We really appreciate it. Hi. Thank you so much for having us. I'm going to let them do most of the talking, but I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart on behalf of all the students and the parents for supporting the Nashville trip. I know it was something new and different. It certainly could have posed some challenges, but it was a wonderful experience for the students, for myself. Um, Faith Merchant and Katie McGuire were the other two adults that traveled with us, and it was seamless, an amazing city, um, and we still smile just thinking about it. So thank you for taking a chance on us and letting us have that experience. So I will hand it over to Anna Curtin and Stephen Olson. I also wanted to say thank you for like approving it and everything. It was amazing. Um, <coughs> there are so many highlights that I have to that trip, and it's just, it was awesome. <laughs> um, we did a lot. I've always wanted to travel down to Nashville because it's Music City, and I've been like, I love country. <laughs> A lot. So just being there and hearing how much like music is played downtown, like for Broadway, it, sh it was just amazing. Right. Whatever you want. All right, I guess. Hi, I guess it's my turn now. Uh, former student and now graduate of Ludenberg High School, and that's really weird to say. Uh, <laughs> not taking much time out of my schedule because I don't have any homework to do. It's, <laughs> It's bizarre. Um, so Nashville, I mean, I can almost say it was life-changing, the experiences I had. Um, about not even 20 minutes ago, I was t at home talking to my mom, and she was looking for a new background on her computer. I was like, well, maybe you should put, maybe you should make Broadway in Nashville. It's got a bunch of neon lights. It's beautiful. And I was scrolling through Google Images looking for a picture to use, and I was just telling her all these stories about all these places we went. And I saw this place called Tootsie's Orchid Lounge. And I believe it was Monday afternoon. We had nothing left on the itinerary. Uh, we'd finished everything. So we decided just to go up and go upstairs. We heard music coming from upstairs, as you do from every single place in that city. Uh, so we heard music, and we decided to go upstairs, and there's this couple playing. And they noticed that we were a music group. So they said, oh, it's awesome. And you guys, why don't you guys sing a song with us? So we sang, we sang Wagon Wheel by Darius Rucker with them. And then they called us on stage and we sang the song that we recorded at RCA Studios with them. 
And after me personally being a musician myself, you can find me at the Dragonfly Cafe Friday nights. Um, <laughs> first, fr- first, Friday the, first, Friday, yeah. first Friday of the month. First Friday of the month. I went up to the guy and I said, it's really hard to make it playing country in Massachusetts. And he goes, wait, you, you play guitar? Yeah. You sing? Oh, kind of. So the gentleman, and I'm never going to forget this moment, he took off his guitar, handed it to me, and said, here you go, knock yourself out. So a little background about Tootsie's Orchid Lounge, right behind the stage on which I played is the Ryman Auditorium, which is also known as the birthplace of country music. So what would happen between shows at the Ryman Auditorium is all these big country acts from way back would come to the open mic at Tootsie's, and they'd play on the, very sa- on the exact same stage that I played I played on and it was life-changing and looking at all the neon and me being a big country fan myself whenever someone whenever I heard Nashville in a song it was always something that I just like I had to imagine and I imagined what it was like and now that now that I've seen it I don't have to imagine that anymore and it's just it's amazing to think about and like to be able to imagine some, whenever someone says Broadway Nashville, I can imagine, I can imagine my own experiences. I can imagine seeing the sea of yellow before a Predators game that, the first night we were there and being all confused as to why Nashville being so far south is a hockey town. Um, and going to the Grand Ole Opry and just seeing all this stuff, it's just, I can't wait to go back. So thank you so much for the opportunity and thank you for letting me speak before you today. And what are your plans? Uh, My plans, I'm studying, I actually just took my placement exam today. I'm studying history at Fitchburg State University. Okay. Any music in there? Um, I'm going to try. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep playing at the Dragonfly. They're open mics. But other than that, uh, I don't know what they have. I'm going to find out. Okay. Stephen, would you share what you did at Senior uh, Showcase and who you uh, sang with? I saw some video. With my dad, I played... um, I played a song by three country artists, Charles Kelly, who, if you know Lady Antebellum, he's the male vocalist, Eric Pasley, and Dirk Bentley, and they have a song put out called The Driver. And it's a beautiful song. It's got three acoustic, it's three vocals and three acoustic guitars, and I thought it was beautiful the first time I heard it. And I figured, well, I have a 12-string guitar, which is basically two guitars, and I have my dad, who was, who <laughs> taught, who, so my dad taught me music, and he taught me everything I know, well, most of everything I know. I have to give Mrs. Warbell at least some credit. <laughs> um, so he got me into music, and every, like, He'd play his acoustic sets when I was about, like, when I was six up until I was 15 when he moved out. Um, I would stay up at night at my 8.30 bedtime, and I'd know every lyric to every song that he played. And I didn't know how to play guitar yet, but I kind of knew what the chords were. And it was really... So I figured what better way to honor him than to have him on stage on my, on my last performance on the stage of... Lunenburg High School. Yeah. So I, I played the song The Driver with him, and it was... I almost cried at, at part of it. I almost cried when we were practicing it. It was... <laughs> Anna I cried, cried for you, Stephen, because it was beautiful. <laughs> it was great. Um, but yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience, especially, I mean, especially after being at the home of country and knowing what it's all about now. And it was amazing. So thank you again. <laughs> thank you again. It was thank wonderful, you. and thanks for letting us. Speak Once again, just um, just outstanding work, and <laughs> you always make us so proud when you travel because uh, you, um, you represent your community, your school, and yourselves so very well. So you thank make my you. My life easy. Yes, <laughs> it was yes. seamless. Yeah. Is that something you want to plan annually? Um, so we typically would travel every other year. So okay. it would be the kind of thing we would do maybe once every four years. Okay. So every student has a chance to go. Okay. I would like to go to Austin too, maybe, which is another oh, oh. music city yep. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's an expensive trip, yeah. I, I and I would love to have more students come along. But if we did a smaller trip every other year, mm-hmm. then they could save up yeah. for a big trip like that where we're flying, and you know, you need to spend more than one night or two nights there to really soak it in. Oh yeah, and you know, we had time, which we don't always have in other places, to just walk the streets and like, oh, this sounds good. This mother daughter duet sounds great. Let's go in there. Oh, they have an upstairs and a downstairs, and it's different. And we had a full itinerary, but we had this downtime to really just kind of get immersed in the whole thing. And that, I think, for me at least, is what made it really special. Mm-hmm. 
So for like two, four years. Okay. Mm. I say you go back to Nashville. <laughs> back to <laughs> Every four years, I'm go right back to Nashville. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Thank Mrs. You. Ward. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank you. And I did bring the the program from from the showcase. The from the showcase, showcase. I'll pass it around <laughs> for you. And it, it was recorded, so you I can did see you find it on the cable. Oh, on cable. So it's recorded okay. good. Yeah, some outstanding Is it performance. On YouTube, do you think? If it was recorded, it should be. Should be yep. on but I, I don't remember YouTube? seeing it. Okay. We can, um, I'll check with the cable folks and, and see if we can get the, the link and, and share it out with everybody. Because it's well worth the time. The expo, I think we talked about last time, was, uh, was just another amazing performance. And, and to have the art uh, show as part of that um, is such a nice transition from uh, the old pops, which we all uh, cherished and really loved. But um, it's a really nice next step and growth and change um, <coughs> so I also wanted to uh, tell you that the senior award ceremony I know all of you were very busy that evening because oh, you yeah. had a candidate interview um, uh, it was just um, always such a moving experience to be there and to have so many families come back and talk about uh, the scholarships they're presenting in the name of a loved one that uh, perhaps they lost or uh, just remembering the service of that loved one to to the community and and um, you know certainly sharing uh, at their generosity uh, in in funding these scholarships uh, for the students and I just really appreciate hearing those stories about the individuals um, around those scholarships and and I also brought the program from that for you to, to yeah. look at as well so a wonderful graduation outside the weather uh, report turned just in time and um, we had a beautiful graduation the students were amazing in their speeches in their performances uh, the music performances the music selections that they chose um, it was a uh, um, an outstanding, another outstanding Lunenburg graduation, very moving uh, and moved right along as well. Everybody uh, recognizes that getting to the handing out of those diplomas is what it's all about. And, <coughs> and so we moved right along and we had a, a beautiful day. It was nice and warm outside. The pollen was a little oh. thick, but um, uh, it was just most enjoyable and uh, it was uh, a very wonderful way uh, to send our, our graduates off and thank everybody who had such um, a big contribution to making sure that every was, everything was in place, Mrs. Cooney and the office staff at the Lunenburg High School, Mr. Spadafino, for uh, uh, the guidance office as well, Mrs. Cavioli and Mrs. Uh, Norman. <coughs> just do a marvelous job of making sure that that's a very special ceremony for everyone and I want to be sure to express my appreciation to all of them as well um, so that's our superintendent's report for tonight okay Thanks. so now we are on to the student reps report I won't forget you today <laughs> closer uh, so as superintendent comms mentioned graduation was this past weekend and it did run very smoothly um, something a little special about this graduation was that the students were able to decorate their graduation caps <coughs> for the first time which is something that the student council at the high school has been working really hard to um, make happen um, over the past few years and I think overall it was really exciting for these students they were able to come together and make or hopefully start a new tradition of decorating the caps <coughs> with your friends um, and then I think they all looked really really nice up there um, so that was exciting and then the sports seasons are wrapping up the boys and girls lacrosse teams just um, ended their seasons yesterday in tough fought losses. Um, the softball team plays their first district game this Thursday against Northbridge and then the boys baseball team got the third seed this year so they had a bye week and then they play next Monday and the team is to be determined. Um, and then our track athletes, the boys competed in a decathlon today and then the girls team competed in a um, pentathlon today as well. Um, next Thursday, June 11th, we have sports sign-ups for next fall season, um, 6 to 7 in the middle school project room. And then also the student council has been working to set up a new online store, which the link is finally up on the um, school website, so everybody should check it out. 
Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to thank all of you for letting me sit up here for a year and a half and just say that I've truly learned so much just watching these meetings. Um, it's not super easy coming up here and speaking, especially at the beginning of last year, but I've learned so many skills from all of you that I'll be able to carry on for the next three years. And then I also want to thank Superintendent Combs um, for everything she's done for the community and just make sure she really knows that she's had such a large impact on the students in the district. So. Thank you're you. not Eliza. leaving yet right no 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 no. Oh. i'll be here next year i just this is my last meeting this year because um i'll be attending girl state on the 20th so i won't be here for that meeting oh okay but, yeah right. i'm so, here next year <laughs> eliza's you're a little nervous uh, yes uh all of us um i believe eliza's going to actually serve as a mentor and a coach to um the uh, a student who will go um to yeah. follow her uh, because she'll be a senior next year and you'll be busy and so uh, an underclassman um, yeah. is I going to be. I believe Julia Wilson is okay. planning on taking Great. my spot over after I graduate. Okay. <laughs> and thank you. Um, the hats, I'm so glad you uh, remembered to talk about the mortar boards yeah. because they were delightful. It was so fun to, to sit up there and see all the creative designs uh, that everyone had put on those. And it really did add <laughs> something very special. I also wanted to, uh, around graduation, it was uh, everyone, Mr. Londa, Ms. Cavioli, um, uh, the vendors were working really hard to try to get the banners up the, that will line the driveway going up. Um, and I know that's one of the uh, gifts <laughs> from the class of 2018 is to add a banner mm -hmm. to that group as well um, as that wonderful um, industrial printer, is yeah. how they're referring to it, industrial. that they'll put in the library. Uh, but... Um, <laughs> I know everybody was disappointed about that, but I just want to reassure everyone that that project is moving forward, um, and that'll be a nice addition to um, the driveway and the entryways into the Lunenburg High School uh, shortly, we hope. Also, the um, student council actually decided today that we're going to donate two flags as well. Oh, so. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a total, what is that, seven? That's four from them, five, four six, seven. seven, yeah. Yep. Awesome. Outstanding. Love it. No. That's exciting. That is exciting. Yep. Oh, Very I can't nice. wait to see that for the beginning of the school year. Okay. So um, we have a change in our agenda because um, under new business, the charter review report, um, we have a delay. So that will come later in the evening. So the first order of new business is the appointment of our new superintendent, <coughs> which I'm sure is why most of you are here anyway. You didn't want to hear the charter review, did you? Um, Okay, so I would just like to say, um, take, take a moment to thank the screening committee for sending the school committee three outstanding candidates. Um, on that committee was Chief Marino. The parents were Rhonda Yardine Yates and Steve Randall, who's here today. Uh, citizens at large were Scott Archipetti and Rob Ebersall. The teachers were Mary Foyle and Amy Raboyan. Central office was Liz Peterson. Administration was Brian Spadafino. Our town <coughs> manager, Heather Lemieux, sat on the committee. and. Um, my fellow school committee sat with me, uh, member Meredith Weiss. So um, I just, um, that was out, that, I just think the process has been outstanding because I got to sit on the screening committee and now on the school committee and I just think it has been a really smooth process thanks to our MASC rep, Dorothy Presser, who assisted me a great deal in the process and Mr. Cassidy, our HR guy, down there who also helped me a great mm -hmm. deal. Um, so um, in March, we had a forum for the community to attend and um, they gave us feedback on what they were looking for in the next superintendent. And they were looking for someone who was passionate, is inspirational, innovative, and a collaborative leader. They were looking for someone with a doctorate, a long-term team player, someone who de would develop a strong, self-sufficient administrative team, which they have the ability to do now that we have a lot of administrative hirings. Um, the bonus of a grant writer. They wanted someone who would find a teacher's passions and reconnect them with why they became teachers. A former classroom teacher, a community leader, and a partner with the town. Someone who would find connections with our students and is current on new trends and eager to bring new ideas to the table. So, with that, we are going to, oh, let me look for my other piece of paper. We have a process now. We are going to, where did I write it? 
Oh, I sent it in an email to you guys. Oh. <laughs> so we're going to discuss our candidates and figure out the vote makeup of what we need to appoint um, our new superintendent, which would just be a majority of three going forward if we wanted to appoint them. So, um, Personally, I, I'd like, to, like us yeah. to see a... a oh, a um, unanimous. A unanimous. Yes, I, so I, I feel very strongly about that. So I'm going to move that we proceed to the discussion related to the superintendency and the appointment of a superintendent of schools. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we are going to discuss the candidates, and we would like to see a unanimous vote. Is that what we would I, like that? I would love to see a unanimous vote. Okay. Yes. I, I, I think okay. we can make that happen. Okay. You think we can make that happen? I think okay. we can. Okay. Who would like to start? How are we discussing? What is the manner? Is it an open discussion? Yes. Is it... Mm -hmm. we, so are... Are we putting, are we? I would think that you would just talk about who you are going to recommend. Okay, that was my question. Okay, so would you like to start? I would like to Please start. Um, I would like to put forward Dr. Kate Burnham as, um, as our next superintendent. Um, I tried to think about, you know, when we put together our, um, our flyer that went public and we thought about oh, yeah. all of those things that you said all of those qualities we were looking for um, I then sat back after you know all information we've had over the last few months and these were five areas um, that I wanted to highlight regarding Dr. Burnham that I felt like were in alignment with our vision our goals where we wanted to see the district go she has an inclusive collaborative expansive leadership skills including central office experience her experience and success partnering with and leading district staff to stay connected grow and feel passion for their jobs as educators through directed individual professional development she is student-centered and is committed to community connection and engagement she believes that building trust and confidence through open communication and listening creates strong relationships with all stakeholders. And she has clear in-depth plans for creating budgets that support, my class is off for this part, <laughs> that support not only the district priorities, but our strategic plan. So our district has priorities, but obviously our strategic plan guides us and she communicated <coughs> clear in-depth plans for how to bring us there. I can go you can next. just jump in yeah. whenever okay. you know. Yeah. <clears throat> I would also like to recommend Dr. Kate Burnham. Um, as I thought about the candidates, I was thinking about as a parent, who do I think would be the best to bring teachers together to help support my students, my son and his friends and everyone coming up behind him and around him. As a school committee member, who is someone that I think that I could work with and that the current board and future boards could work with. As an educator, someone that I wanted to work for and that I really believed that other teachers at the elementary, the middle, and the high school would want to work for as well. And then as a community member, someone that I thought could really communicate with all the stakeholders, forming budgets, um, solving conflicts, making tough decisions, and doing it in a way that was <coughs> passionate, honorable to everyone, listening to their ideas, bringing those ideas together, and, and making the tough decisions when they needed to be made. So that's why I would like to see Dr. Kate Burnham. Um, for reasons already stated, uh, I would also like to put forward Dr. Kate Burnham. Um, in addition to the fact that when we had our, our opportunity to talk with her last night, um, I found her answers to our questions to be creative. Um, we did, as part of our community forum, think look to somebody who would um, think outside the box. Mm -hmm. 
Um, she came with some very interesting uh, solutions to several of the questions that we all answered. Um, the, the the budget being one of those questions. Um, I just found that she embodied the ideals that we were looking for almost to a T. Um, I could not find anything in her in uh, in the research I did, the background, the the, <coughs> uh, the the phone calls I made, talking to anybody that would indicate that she would not be able to uh, to lead the schools and to work with each of the stakeholders uh, to advance the agenda. And one of the things I found very interesting was that one of the first things she said she asked for when applying was a copy of the strategic plan so that she knew what she was getting into. Um, and I think that speaks volumes to um, where her focus was to that. Um, and, and the additional feedback that we received from, from the community um, yes, was also uh, very positive, outstanding positive for, feedback. for Dr. Burnham. Yeah. Um, and there was that recurring th theme, I'd love to work with this person. Um, and I think that, that she is a very strong person to, um, to take over. Carol? I would also support Dr. Kate Burnham <coughs> as our next superintendent. Um, obviously for the reasons everyone else has stated, but also her vast experience will allow her to come in and do the hiring necessary that she will need to do immediately. Um, her experience with collaborating over districts, over professional development and curriculum work is outstanding. And um, I, I think she is the best fit for us at this time. So is it unanimous? It, I think it is <laughs> unanimous because I feel exactly the same way. I think that she had such a broad background that she brings to the table for our district, not only as a school teacher, um, curriculum development, special ed director that she just was recruited for and took that on and um, was highly successful in her current district. I think that she offers our community so much that I think we would be fools not to take her. <laughs> I really do. I think that she has such an excitement about her. I am very excited at what she brings to Lunenburg. So um, do we want to do a roll call vote? We do. I wanted to say one more thing. Um, in getting to spend time with her yesterday, all of the professional experience it is vast and it's there and it's, it's all of what we're looking for, but there was a heartfelt piece, something that's you know, in community connection, in connecting with staff, in connecting with students, in connecting with parents, there's a heart piece as well. And that was so present yeah. and yeah. yeah. Just a connection. It was absolutely. It was just there. Our, our the district yeah. to be the very places on yeah. the relationship building. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And she's and so really student nice. student centric. It's all about the kids. Mm -hmm. And you can truly feel it yep. when she speaks, that it's all about the students. And that's why we're here. Absolutely. So um, I will take a roll call vote. Now, so how do we do this? Do, um, Does she call it out? You can take it, yes. Yes. <coughs> yes. Um, yes. Wendy Bertram. Yes. Meredith Weiss. Yes. Jim Levesque. Yes. Carol Archibald. Yes. OK, so then we're going to take a recess and contact her right now to see if she will accept the position of superintendent. Okay. Okay, and then we'll come back and let you know. So, Dorothy, got a commercial or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I hope she doesn't say no. She answers the phone. Okay, we're going to go right in that yeah, room. In that room. It's kind of a messy. You can move that stuff if you need yeah. to. Okay. Yeah. And for the audience that's waiting, help yourself to cheese and crackers. Pineapple.
careful, you know. I'm going for one of these. <laughs> what, what? No, thank you. <laughs> the reach right in front of you. <laughs> I know she's taking some medication. Well, we couldn't close the door. We forgot we're in open meeting. Oh. We really can't do that. Jeez, can't do that. That's kind of not no right. privacy. I'm going to, I'll take that. Okay. Yeah, no, she's, she's so you'll scoot Dorothy. out. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you for everything. Um, Okay, so good. You all know she accepted the position, and so the next part of the process is to do no contract negotiations with our attorneys. Our attorneys. So we'll keep you up to date on that and what her start date will be. Um, our next meeting is the 20th. <coughs> So hopefully we'll have some information to provide to you at that time. <coughs> so now we will progress. Oh, not as exciting after <laughs> Now we're done. <laughs> Sorry, who's, who's just following that? Oh, there's Here other Mr. Santry's like, hey! Mr. Santry! <laughs> no, it's like, like coming out of order. I've got an improvement plan and a handbook. Oh, it's in order, okay. Oh. Oh, yeah, we love improvement plans. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so we've had a, a retirement celebration, <laughs> no. a life-changing trip to Nashville, no, life the appointment of a superintendent, <laughs> and now I get to present my student <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Mr. Sanchez. I think the meeting has officially jumped the shark. So just bear seven with me. Seven more years. All right. <laughs> After you jumped the shark, it went on for seven more years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly, thank you for having That's me here true, tonight. Yeah. Um, before I begin, I just really want to thank my school advisory council. Just for the eight years I've been principal, I've just been so lucky to have such dedicated volunteers of parents and teachers that come together and just share ideas and try to figure out what's best for students. And um, just over the whole time that I've been here, um, oh, we should. Oh, we should. I have... I've just uh, been blessed to be able to work with these people. Uh, Amy Powers, Jessica Frank, uh, Brandon Kibbe, Tim Shaysgreen, Annika Scott, myself, Rob McGrath. Um, just, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Jim Levesque, I apologize. <laughs> Jim, you were <laughs> I got caught up in all the stir, so I apologize. <laughs> and, uh, just being able to get together and talk and work things out and try to do what's best for students. So when we developed our school improvement plan this year, one of our major goals was alignment. We wanted to make sure that our school improvement plan was aligned with the district strategic plan and what they had in plan for the next several years. So our school improvement plan has three goals and those goals are a student learning goal, they're a social and emotional goal, and they're a professional development and communication goal. Um, I, I don't want to read it to you, but I would rather just kind of go over the highlights. And if you had any questions at the end, I'd be more than happy to answer them. So uh, our focus in most of our school improvement 
uh, moving into our new building had been the integration of technology to make sure teachers were utilizing the technology that came with this brand new building, uh, making sure that that was being integrated into classroom instruction. Uh, so that was our major focus for uh, the last year and for this year. It's going to continue to be our focus, but we want to make sure that um, th that teachers are progressing uh, with using that technology, just not being at a beginner level or just not utilizing that in a I don't want to say in a superficial way, but make sure that we're, we're accessing that technology to the best of our ability. Our Epson um, um, projectors, that are uh, interactive projectors that are in every room, our document cameras, our Chromebooks, we want to make sure that those are being implemented. And our uh, advisory council has actually built in a, um, like a check-in in December where I'll report out to them. And at that point, we'll... I'll show them evidence that um, this is being incorporated into the classroom, or we're going to talk about what type of professional development that we're going to need in order to get to that next level of integration of technology. But as you know, technology it isn't all, student learning isn't just about technology. And our, uh, our school advisory council is adamant about not just to have a balanced objective of having technology and the traditional teaching strategies that teachers have. Um, so we decided to continue to utilize that shared inquiry approach to teaching critical thinking, and that's through our Great Books program that we've been associated with now for several, several years out of Chicago. Uh, Great Books isn't a reading program, it's a thinking program. And it really teaches kids how to think critically, break down very difficult um, literary readings, and to be able to defend what their argument is, to be able to go back in the text and defend it. Um, and it's a teacher as a facilitator, not telling them what to think, but maybe asking uh, questions where they're going to be able to defend their viewpoint. And it's, it's been extremely beneficial and it was just with the coming in the new building our focus was on technology now I want to make sure that we have a balanced approach in every classroom so we're not just going to be doing the great books in the LA but we're going to try to mix it into different content areas <coughs> as we move through so that's kind of a synopsis on our goal number one so our goal number two is our social emotional learning and um, so this year, we had our developmental design and our advisory groups. And we did that at <laughs> 6, 7, 8. And we met every week. And almost every adult in the building was assigned a group of students in which uh, we would do an advisory period. That was about 25 to 35 minutes long. The goal of this advisory was, for one, for students to develop goals for the year and to see if they were attaining those goals. But it's also about fostering positive relationships. And it's about having, at least having one adult in the building that a student feels comfortable with to be able to maybe report out if, they were, if there was something wrong or to report out when something goes well. We want those close connections to continue in our building. And that's really what fosters that positive climate and culture that we have in the building right now. Um, I had my advisory group in the eighth grade. Uh, I had 12, 13 great kids. And I can just report out some of the things that I did. We did that goal setting with each student. I did uh, grade check-ins every quarter, so I would call them up while other kids were doing a hands-on activity. We would look at their grades on power school and see where they could improve or, or where they were falling through the cracks or if they weren't doing their homework. I was able to kind of do a little checkpoint halfway through each quarter. Um, we did goals and declarations as a building. So we developed a social contract from goals that, uh, rules that kids felt that everyone in our school community should follow. We developed those, we put up big um, posters, you might have seen them in the middle school hallway, just um, not more like a rule, but more like a declaration, and this is how we're gonna behave when we're in our building. Um, so that was one of the major things of our advisory, which I thought was very successful. Um, and that will touch upon our community piece in that social-emotional goal. But also uh, for that social-emotional piece, 
in the project learning and the community-based piece that I wanted to tie in is our Genius Hour that we piloted this year, which I felt was very successful for asking my teachers in September, here, here's an idea, we want to let students um, learn about what they want to learn about and uh, you're going to have to relinquish some power and you're just going to have to allow a student to kind of figure out what they would like to do let them work in teams or let them work individually and then at the end of the year i want them to to present something that they've done uh, it's just a really powerful message to kids that they can own their own learning and um, we're going to continue to do that as part of our social emotional uh, curriculum. I don't know if you've heard about the Lun Lunenburg Skate Park program uh, that was fostered in one of our Genius Hour projects. Um, and it's steamrolled into learning about our process and how we get things done in, in the community. So I just think it's wonderful. And our third goal is around professional development. And um, so we want that really to be tied into what our school uh, improvement plan is. We want professional development around our great books and around how we're going to um, continue to push that into different content areas besides ELA. We want it to be around our developmental design, around our social emotional curriculum to get some more teachers trained uh, on how to provide that developmental design and maybe in a train the trainer model to come back and train some of our newer teachers that might not be as adept at uh, providing that. And then uh, around technology and around that deeper understanding of how to um, utilize the technology in our building. So that's a snapshot <coughs> or a highlight of our school improvement plan. And if you had any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer them. I'm good. I know this stuff is not easy. It takes a lot of time and effort. And I uh, just want to express my appreciation to you and all the, all the principals that have and com committee members who've put this these type of documents together. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah. Got great, great teachers and great students that make us look good, so it's great. Uh, but Mr. Sandry, I uh, have to commend you for your leadership around the Genius Hour because I know you came out of the strategic planning piece um, very impassioned about tapping into students' passion and working with Mrs. Scott um, and the rest of your faculty. The, the notion of the Genius Hour has just been, I think, a real game changer for the middle school students um, and uh, for the faculty too because there was a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of embracing that. Um, so thank you. Um, uh, for providing that leadership and that creativity uh, to make that happen there at, the, uh, at Lunenburg Middle School. Thank you very much, Superintendent. Appreciate and you're that. You're continuing in that into the next year, right? Yes, I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. So for the student and the parent handbooks, there were some very minor revisions. Some revolved around, you know, even changing what our mission and our vision was. I believe there was a change in the uh, code of conduct and where we added uh, a lunch detention as yep. a possible infraction. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that was a lunch detention uh, was being utilized by our teaching staff, but really wasn't listed in the code of conduct. So I wanted to make sure that parents uh, knew that that was an option. Uh, it's for very minor infractions, ones that we want to nip right in the bud with an immediate kind of consequence that could be 5, 10, or up to 15. Sometimes it's the full 22 minutes, but not normally. And those would be spent with the teacher in their classroom and kind of reviewing on what the minor infraction was. Uh, we took uh, cell phones off of our banned um, Good thing. articles, and we kind of reworked our cell phone um, policy, which is, of course, students can have cell phones on them, but they're, unless they're to be instructed by a teacher in the classroom, they're to be off or kept on them. Yeah. And then after school, they can access them at that time. Um, some other very main, um, oh, we wanted to, in the parent handbook, we made a revision <coughs> around, um, just so they know about the security of the building now, that if we don't recognize you at the front door, we're going to ask you for an ID. So if you're coming to pick up your child or if that you have an appointment at the school, don't be offended when someone asks you to see your ID because there's 800 and something kids in the school. So um, we didn't want that to be a surprise. We want that to become a common practice that when people show up to the building, they have an ID. 
On the little section on honor roll, I think it's just a little typo. Um, honor roll is calculated for and for sixth grade in the second, third, and fourth grade. I think the, the sentence comes out funny. Honor roll is calculated for and for sixth grade in the second, third, and fourth quarters. I'll have so, to so go take, back. take a look at it. It's just a. The change like that was is fun. that sixth grade was only eligible for honor roll for third and fourth quarters. Right. Now they are second, eligible for fourth. second, third, yeah. and fourth. So, so the I'll sentence take. doesn't affect the meaning of it. I mean, that part of it. Gotcha. So just check that little piece. And other besides uh, the prices of lunch or other minor revisions, I believe that was all correct, Jim? Yeah. Yeah. The, um, I mean, there were really just minor changes. Um, but speaking of lunches, I thought I saw, so on the, the student handbook has the cost of hot lunch is $3 per 50. What is that? Three fifty? Three dollars per fifty. I think it should be three dollars for lunch and it's fifty cents for milk, right? Is that yeah? So yes. oh, okay. there, there seems to be a typo. I'll on fix that. those two. Things. I apologize I, for that. Yeah. Thank you for I, it, mentioning it, the typo because I had read that earlier and I had forgotten to mention it. Yeah. When you look over documents a million times. Now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Happens. Any other questions I could field? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Have a good night. I wish I had the uh, genius hour when I was in school. Uh, yeah. And thanks for a great trip to D.C. Smarter. Three out of the five of oh. us oh. Oh. here on the stage yeah. had students you with a, you. Do you have a few minutes? Oh, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. To ask you, uh, uh, it was a wonderful trip. Wonderful trip. Um, it's not often that you're with 130 eighth graders in a public place in a foreign city and strangers are stopping you while you're eating breakfast and saying, your students are so well behaved and very respectful so i mean just to be able to hear that um it was wonderful uh to be able to go on that trip is memorable capitol building tour going through our memorials the riverboat cruise um, just wonderful experience for the kids it is a long trip even for kids i mean we were up at 5:30, yeah. back to the hotel at 10 15. It, it was long, it was an 11 hour bus ride there and back, but all worth it, all worth it. Wonderful chaperones, wonderful kids, parents supported. Um, very minor glitches that couldn't be managed right there on site. And just uh, uh, the feedback that I get from kids that I ask is that they had a blast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. So I would like to recommend approval of the uh, um, school improvement plan for the Lunenburg Middle School and also acceptance of the handbook with the changes as outlined. So I will take a motion. Motion to approve the Lunenburg Middle School 2018-19 school improvement plan and parent handbook with and changes. Student handbook. Student. Okay. And, stu oh, yeah. and student, yeah. and parent and student yeah. handbook. Yeah. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. So, oh, where are we on the agenda? Oh, we are yeah, about Madame ready Beardmore. to have Madame, uh, Madame, Beardmore. Madame Beardmore. Beardmore come talk yeah. about the final arrangements for a wonderful trip that's coming up uh, shortly. Thank you, Mrs. Beardmore, for being Bonsoir. here. Good evening. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. <laughs> Bonsoir. 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 Bons
getting out of school? Was that the the primary reason? So they weren't leaving the next day after they get out of school, um, or because you had to do, or was school. there the, no? Yeah, the because schools? we had to combine with other schools okay. from around the country, and everybody, you know, they had put in for different dates, and we had or some one school who only has like about five kids had put in for a totally different trip. So we're very lucky we got the same trip, just mm. dates shifted. Right. Um, um, so it had to do with you know people making compromises, and so so that we all were able to still get you know whatever close to whatever trip we had wanted, maintaining price as well. So with no, yes, that's what that right. was made the point. Maintaining price, right? Like if we hadn't combined, it would have been a lot more expensive mm-hmm. for our students. So that's an advantage to combining with other schools. So very excited. Very excited. My daughter's coming, so yeah, I was going to ask you if Rose was going. Yes, yes, she is, and uh, I was just thinking I could actually because it's just nine students, which is, um, you know, I mean, I, obviously, I love having a big group to expose more students, but it's also lovely to have a small group mm-hmm. because we have a lot more flexibility, and so maybe during some of our free time, I can actually bring them to some of the places I lived when I was there, and uh, you know, show them the little street that I used to live on, and that. So that'll be yeah. it'll, it'll it'll be it'll be more than just. A, a trip but they're always more than just a trip but this one this one's going to be pretty special because she's going yeah, so. That, mm. so and mrs beard merle i just have to thank you and all your colleagues who over the years have arranged and um taken uh, so many students and provided these kinds of opportunities to them and it takes a lot of your time and effort and um you know it's a great it's a big responsibility to travel with uh, children overseas, and you, uh, you and your colleagues keep stepping up and doing <laughs> it uh, and making it happen. And I'm so grateful for that um, as a parent as well as an educator. So thank you. So we certainly recommend final approval um, of the the trip, and they're ready to to go. I'll take a motion. For Move final. to approve the final tr- trip. For uh, France and Spain. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Enjoy. Thank you, and thanks for supporting educational travel. (laughs) Thank you. Okay, then we're on to our second reading of the policies. Yes, we um, offered some uh, revised or brand new policies at the last meeting. They're all uh, posted at the website and would just recommend uh, waive the reading of them at this point in time. We haven't received any uh, feedback. We will push out uh, some more information. I know we've been focusing up on uh, making sure people have the information around the superintendent's yeah. search pr- uh, procedures, uh, but um, I imagine, Mrs. Roca, you'll have an announcement to maybe make tonight that we can get out for you or shortly and then we'll um, also make sure that everybody's aware of this and I just wanted to take a moment while we're making folks aware of activities Um, uh, this weekend you know is the arts festival here in Lunenburg and want to encourage everyone to come out for that and then on the 14th uh, uh, the we're sponsoring at the school a wonderful community fundraiser for AEDs for the police vehicles. There will be a basketball game uh, between the public um, safety folks and uh, the civilians, as we refer to them. Uh, it should be a really fun time, lots of raf- things to raffle off, and, and just to encourage folks to come out and support that worthy um, activity. Um, once again, the policies themselves are, are posted at the website. Um, they cover things like our key, having a key posi- uh, policy that who gets issued um, and what are the terms of issuing keys as well as pass cards. Uh, we have the new naming policy that's uh, before um, everyone as well as donation policy, fundraising uh, policy. Um, we worked and presented, I believe with the caveat, so I believe we might be in second reading of a policy around the display of trophies because we did talk about making that exception and if everybody was um, uh, we hadn't really crafted the language specific language the concept I think everyone was in agreement with at first reading but we hadn't crafted the language and it sounded like the athletic advisory uh, did want um, was appreciative of that happening and did want that to go forward as well 
good. So those were the major uh, policies uh, for second reading. Right. Okay, so I'll take a motion to waive the readings. I'll make a motion to waive, waive the, the readings. second readings. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. So first reading. Um. Uh, yeah, a little housekeeping <coughs> item uh, because of some new laws and regulations around uh, protected class of adding pregnancy and pregnancy related conditions uh, that those all be added to the non-discrimination or equal employment opportunity or hiring as well as uh, educational opportunities. So both in any uh, time that um, I, I know everyone's f familiar with these policies where there's a list of protected um, okay. categories and this um, phrase will be added to all of those as well so if I, I know some of our handbooks have those non-discrimination uh, statements in them as well and we'll make sure <coughs> that the handbooks carry that as well uh, so uh, this would be just a, a first reading uh, acknowledging that addition to uh, okay. any place that appears within any policy throughout all throughout, the throughout all the policies okay. correct so do, we don't need to read all of those policies? No. We're going to waive the reading on all the policies and just include pregnancy or pregnancy-related conditions where they refer to protective classes. I make a motion to waive the first reading um, where we'll be adding pregnancy or pregnancy-related conditions as protected class in any of the policies uh, before the school committee. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Oh, so now we've come to public comment. Let me just see. Here. Phyllis Luck, 50 Sunset Lane. I would just like to thank everyone on the school committee and everyone on the search committee for the superintendent. I know what an important job this is and how much pressure there is on you. The school superintendent is such an important role in our community and um, Superintendent Combs leaves very big shoes to fill. Thank so you. I know that you felt a great deal of pressure but in speaking with the candidate that you chose last night, I was very comfortable with her. I thought that she would be a great fit and I am so pleased for our community that you have made, you have done all of this work and you've made such a good decision and hopefully <laughs> she can um, live up to, you know, everything that you've done. Thank so, you, Phyllis. Very great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you, Phyllis. I just wanted to mention that next Thursday, the 14th, June 14th, is the public forum for the primary school principal oh, candidate search. Um, so I hope people will attend that mm -hmm. um, to That'll be get a, my update too. What? That'll be on my update. Oh, your update. update. Okay. I just wanted to make sure we didn't forget that. Okay. So then um, we're on. Any other public comment from our public? No? Um, reports? Do we have any school council reports since the last we met? Not since Not last meeting. I don't have any. Not at the middle school. No? Okay. Um, wellness <coughs> Advisory Committee? Wellness has not met since our last, last meeting. meeting. PTO, Mary? PTO did meet on Monday. Um, they did their business at 110 Grill. I was taking it easy. I was <coughs> up on, on rest so I could be as healthy as I could for today's meeting. Okay. Um, and I understand an email is going to be coming out to all the PTO um, groups, letting them know who all the new positions, who the, all the new positions are. Well. Okay. So Excellent. we can look to that. Um, Policy subcommittee. We, we have not met no. since our last meeting. Okay. Principal search committee. Principal search committee. I had to type it up, otherwise I would have forgotten everything. <coughs> so, um, after a um, period of time, the screening committee have selected the finalists, um, which will be presented on the 14th. And those finalists are Don Marie Ailes from Harvard Public Schools and Bonnie Faulkner from Drakett Public Schools. Our intention is to complete the site visits over the next two weeks. Candidate resumes are currently available uh, and for public release from Mr. Cassidy's office. Okay. 
Uh, we look forward to presenting those finalists to the new superintendent, Dr. Dr. Burnham. We'll need to um, formally invite her uh, and the public forum, which will be held on, again, as you said, Thursday the 14th at 6.30 p.m. at the Lunenburg Primary School. Um, I believe the AED is 7 to 9, so there's plenty of time to do both. Um, this is an opportunity for the public to meet and greet the candidates and ask questions so that they can provide feedback to our new superintendent to make the decision. <coughs> excellent, excellent. And I guess I get the next one too, athletic advisory. Double down for you, Jim. <sighs> Yay. Um, all right, so our last meeting was on May 24th. Um, and, and we had discussed that uh, <coughs> Principal Spadafino had stepped in to the AD responsibilities. Um, we talked about, and we talked about uh, that, the, the, you know, the, all the things that the AD does that he, the role. that really seemed to be um, unaware yep. uh, at some level. So um, un fully understanding the role, I think, is, is great. Um, it's unfortunate that we'll be losing him at the same time, so that that, that knowledge won't be imparted. But hopefully um, whoever uh, Dr. Burnham hires will certainly have that information, that background. Uh, we talked about pr the proposed policy around the fundraising. We found that it accurately reflected the recommendations presented to the school committee. Uh, we talked about this concession stand policy and procedure uh, that Mr. Londa had presented. Um, we felt that it was heavy on procedure and light on policy, and that policy um, really should be separated from the procedure. You know, we, so what we did is said, uh, let's go back and see if we can separate the <coughs> policy from the procedure and make a recommendation to the policy subcommittee on policy and deal with the lockup procedure and cleanup procedures and all that stuff separately because okay. it's, they're, they're unrelated uh -huh. and they shouldn't all be in the same document. Um, at the same time, you know, the, the, this came up because uh, the, the Board of Health and the Showbook Board of Health um, is, has, is going to prevent us from actually cooking in the, in the concession stand or providing food not made f from a, um, a certified kitchen, right? Mm -hmm. So what, um, so one of our, our members, Mr. De, De, De Francesco, <coughs> has decided to, um, to lead a smaller group to work with the Neshoba Board of Health and say, all right, for us to be able to do what we were doing, which is people bring crock pots or whatever else, um, what do we need to do in this room mm -hmm. to make it compliant that we can still do that? So we've got two paths going on right now. We've got one saying, how do we get to keep doing what we're doing um, and not have to spend mon spend more money to buy it, bring food in that instead of, of making food? Mm -hmm. um, and then the other path of let's look at what the procedure is and the policy separate okay. and um, to provide that. So that is in process. Um, turf painting will take place on August 7th and August 8th. Turf painting? Turf okay. painting, okay. Yes. The lines on the okay. The lines, yes. Sorry. Um, so we also had a very lengthy discussion around middle school athletics. Um, so Rhonda Jardine Yates had presented some details around the girls' <coughs> field hockey. Uh, she said that there are approximately 25 girls that are currently interested in playing, but there's no feeder program from the town or surrounding the uh, into our high school girls field hockey um, and that used to exist prior to 2014 apparently so we discussed that um, you know we do have a limitation we have uh, only in a certain number of fields there's, there's only so much space that we can practice on and play on um, there's so much we can do with a budget and there's so much we can do with coaching so um, she did come back and, and say that she believed that the entire program could be parent funded for approximately 175 per player, which would include the coaching. They're looking at grants to fund future teams. So that would have been for one year. So they're looking for grants to fund for the future uh, years. And then we talked about creative ways of finding field time um, and creative <coughs> places to practice, <coughs> like Marshall Field. Um, as an option, or Marshall Park was an option. So they need. There's obviously some work that needs to be done around the actual field space and, and scheduling that. But what I would uh, like to recommend to this group is that we um, invite Ms. Jardine Yates to present to the full school committee 
a proposal on the girls field hockey so that we can make a decision how to move forward okay. um, because there's not a like I said there's not a feeder program currently okay um, can you advise her that she should have more than one year plan yes I will advise well I'll advise because both that's of them. that's um, not I a believe plan. I mentioned to her that we would probably be looking for a five-year plan yeah because that's not really a plan that's just one season right Miss, Mr. Levesque, um, our experience has been that transportation is one of the major drivers in terms of, of um, the teams. So it, it'll be important to make sure that the transportation costs, because I, I assume that with the middle school team, uh, people will come here and play and our team will go elsewhere and play. So the transportation needs to be accounted for. And I'm, I know we talked about that um and I don't remember exactly what the top, uh, where we wound up with that, that there were, um, but I'll, I'll certainly yeah, go back to Just her to make and, sure and, that. Well, when we, when we invite her, yeah. um, you know, and I don't know what, <coughs> on what agenda we'll be able to fit it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll have to leave that to the chair to, to schedule. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, they'd like to give it sooner than later because um, the, the season will be starting. So um, whenever you can get that on an agenda, then I can, uh, but I will go back to her and tell her that these are things that we'd be looking for when it gets on the agenda to, to pre be presented. Also, she might want to um, have a conversation with Mr. Powell because this goes back many years when lacrosse first came with, um, at the high school level, this thought and idea around self-funding. Um, and right. I'm sure he might be able to just offer some additional ideas or thoughts because the high school level went through this experience already. I don't know if they have, if there has um, been anything through advisory, I through athletic believe advisory. He was on the uh, at the meeting. He is at the. He's in the yeah. athletic advisory. Right. I didn't know if they had actually. Well, I think we, we talked about it during any. that. Time. I don't know if okay. she purposely sought out ahead of time, but I will. Might just might be a thought. I will uh, let her know that that's uh, uh, perhaps another avenue to take. Um, also related to the middle school athletics. So about a week before the, um, the agenda was put out, um, Eric De La Santa reached out to us about uh, middle school basketball. That there are no, no basketball teams for boys or girls anymore. Um, and that we are uh, apparently the only town uh, in the area that does not have a um, that does not have a feeder program into the high school basketball through a middle school program. Um, he says that he's been approached by many families, uh, both on the girls' side and the boys' side, about the issue, and he agreed to be the voice of the parents, and so he, he brought that up. Um, granted, he did not, he had very little time to prepare anything uh, ahead of time for, the, for the, the meeting, but we did talk about it. We did, again, discuss the constraints of the court time uh, you know, there's just the one court in the at the high school. There's funding and coaching. Um, he believed that the funding could be covered by user fees and parent funding. Again, I would recommend to them a five-year plan. Um, we did discuss creative scheduling for court time, uh, early mornings, using potentially the TCP gym after the Boys and Girls Club is done. Um, so he feels that there are ways to get time, <coughs> time in the courts. But for but this is for the winter, so there's going to have to be some very creative scheduling involved. I'm just wondering how many teams does he think there will be in the middle school? Because right now the um, teams are grade leveled with the Lunenburg. Um, with the with Lysa or a no no the 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 basketball program the junior basketball junior program. basketball right. they Not have Lisa. a grade travel three. program and stuff so, yeah yeah, yeah so they each have junior a grade level does is a so would program. there be just one team in the middle but school it's not program through the school. No, it's not. But right. so and what, so that was I'm just concern. addressing the fact that that will be a very um, small amount of students if there's one team that will be on it. It's about ten kids on a basketball team. Yeah, I. I, I <laughs> He didn't have numbers. He just had many parents uh, that there's enough okay. to, to support both the boys' team and the girls' team. Okay, so it would be 10, 10 girls and 10 boys, about, uh, approximately, uh, because that's about how many are on the high school okay. teams. There are five on the court at a time. Right. It's not a large team. It's not like field hockey with 
11 on players or soccer on the team out there on the field. Right. I'm just wondering, what, is it going to be one middle school team? Was he thinking grade level thinking middle one, school? One middle school one team. Middle school team. Uh, so along these lines, you know, we talked about the the feeder program into the high school and the uh, the the option that we did last year with the you know you can practice with us but you're not necessarily on the team concept. Um, uh, Mr. Padovino didn't think that that was very successful. I don't think it was this either. past year. Um, so that kind of nobody seemed to be overly enthused that that would, could be a possibility. <laughs> So um, a suggestion I might have is that perhaps they both come on one evening together as the whole <laughs> idea of middle school feeder program so that we hear from, from both sports because they'd both be facing the same challenges. They would both be facing how do, how do we schedule time, how do we deal with busing, how do we, you know, many of the same issues. So it would be something if, we're, if we as a school committee are, are hearing this, it might be you know, a thought to yeah. consider hearing it. So that would be that time. would have been my recommendation right. as well. Okay. To do that. Um, one thing that that we uh, we're going to do is that Mr. Spadafino is going to reach out to Mr. Santry. I don't know if he has yet, and uh, Mr. Santry's gone um, about getting gauging the interest of the middle schoolers mm -hmm. for such a program um, because they didn't have specific numbers. You know, just many. Many doesn't tell me anything, but so they were going to go back and gauge the interest mm -hmm. from the middle school. Um, the students to see what kind of interest there was okay so that's something i would also want yeah, to hear before we put it on an agenda i would want to you know get an idea of that in in a report so that you know we could figure out if it was something that we should right put onto the agenda is is there is there enough interest right and so that's you know obviously so um even even if we put them on the agenda, I think if there wasn't interest, we'd make that decision that they're right. And it sounds like yeah, yep. So um, at this point, I, like I said, for for both, I would recommend that we we add them to an agenda. Um, obviously, winter sports are going to come up sooner than we think. So I guess as as soon as practical. Yeah, I'll look at uh, the um, the next agenda and see how full it is. Okay. So I don't know, you know, maybe yeah, not, maybe not June, but but you know, usually you set the summer uh, agenda yeah. with your new superintendent yeah. now appointed. Um, perhaps <coughs> at the next meeting you can have the information to get that calendar set. Yeah, and and you know we may have to wait until we have an AD. I I don't know. That is true. Right, We're and we We're can we can use fields. Mr. Spadafino. I know they're already working on scheduling. Right, fields we can use Mr. Spadafino right until the fourteenth of July. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. um, but then, but then I don't know what we have after that in terms of, of scheduling. So I, I lost my crystal ball. Um, and, and so we yeah. just kind of need okay. to look for that. So the next meeting uh, has yet to be determined. We are going to have a meeting um, end of June, early July, hopefully, because the, the burning issue right now is that concession stand and the boosters sure. losing money being right. not being able sure. to use it as they had been mm -hmm. um, so they would like to get together before that and I will reach out to both Mr. De La Santa and, and uh, Ms. Ardine okay. Yates about yep. the middle school um, I'll ask them I'll CC you so that you know okay. have their contact information add them to the agenda so that they know when they're okay when we're expecting them to be okay uh, available Excellent. So that was a very long update on the athletic That's advisory. Okay. I heard that uh, that meeting was very long. It was well, uh, they, they've been averaging about three hours lately. Yeah, that's what I heard. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, too too long. That's okay. There's a lot to cover. There is a lot to cover. And it's and a lot of people's passion, athletics. It is, um, and we just can't cover it all in one meeting. Yeah. So we're going to have to. You might need to have more have to meetings much frequently. I'm well. The frequency of your meetings may need. Are they monthly or are monthly. they? Well, by the charter, we're only supposed to have four a year. Oh, there. That's <laughs> advice. That's not that. Yeah. Though you can do more. I think that's just well, what I, you yeah, need to we, have. We are doing more, obviously, but <laughs> yeah. we're only required to do four a year. Right. You're so only you How can do one a month. I know. So uh, we are, and we are meeting once a month, and we are meeting once a month. Need to have more. It's never ending. So we, we I need to do a better job of tightening the agenda into yes. fewer topics, and then move discussion moving, onto yes. the, the next meeting. Yes. yes, I know. There's a. It's a large group, so it's hard to move it is a large the discussion group and, along. Well, not necessarily just the discussion, but the top. The, the, right. the, the you know, if we have five things on the agenda. Yeah. 
take. They each take, you know, yeah, 45 that, minutes yeah. to talk. It's long. Through it's yeah. long. with those people. It's very long. So I need to I need to shorten the agenda and perhaps meet more frequently. Okay. It Learning bears curve. repeating. I, I know you said this, but <coughs> just to reassure everyone, uh, fall sports uh, sign-ups, I believe, is the 11th. Monday, yeah. Monday, Monday, Monday night, night, 6 11. to 7 p.m. Middle School Project. And uh, Mr. Spadafino is working on the field schedules and the rotations yep. and mm -hmm. um, that uh, with Mr. Londa. In fact, we're meeting tomorrow to have some uh, more Good. conversation okay. about that. And then uh, working with our uh, fall youth uh, sports teams as well. Uh, so everyone... Uh, that's all moving along and will be set. So you won't have this void um, in terms of not being ready for the fall in terms of a schedule. And, and also relative to the schedule, I forgot to mention, uh, there was some discussion about um, an equal pairing of night games versus day ga mm -hmm. er, earlier games. Um, there was that. There was some, some discrepancy. Or, Perceived discrepancy. The perceived discrepancy last year that, that some got more late, late games than others. Um, so he's doing his best to level that out so that mm -hmm. no teams are feeling like they're being left <coughs> with definitely the short stick. With girls across this year. Mm -hmm. That was the example, and I was not. And it definitely to, did. Yeah. I was there. So it definitely took place. So he's working on it. Yeah, I know. I, hey. <laughs> I, I understand. It's a, it's a big challenge. Yeah. And then it rains. And then it rains. <laughs> and then, then you have to reschedule. And then, yeah, yeah. and then you have to reschedule and then fit it in. So I, I totally So I, I did not realize that the... Uh, the chunk of stuff I was biting off when I accepted that, but uh, um, which is why we were like the, Jim, Jim, <laughs> don't you want to do it? So, we're no dummies. Well, and, and it's it's good that I don't have students in sport. In sport, absolutely. Yes. That's why we absolutely thought you were part of it because I don't have a vested interest exactly. other than what is in the best interest of the students to enjoy the athletic program. And you were perfect we for the job, and that's why you have it. Yeah. <laughs> because oh, it's getting deep. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's also getting late, so apologies yes. to the okay, TV so viewing okay. audience. Um, we have topics for future discussion. Blizzard brag review again. Um, just, that's just, uh, just so we don't there. forget. So, it. so we don't forget it. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're going to have to put charter review back on there. It doesn't seem like um, Dr. Adams will be um, able to attend. I think that she just had stuff at home going yeah. on. Or she would have been here earlier. Well, hopefully, with we can her get mom. Mr. Mackin at the same right. time. And, and Mr. Mackin, I asked him to attend. Yep. I haven't heard back though. Okay. So hopefully, they'll both come and give us a charter review update, so that when we start charter review, we um, are clued into what's going on. So, yes, that would be nice. Yeah. Because that will be on Wednesday. And so, oh, now we have to go into executive session. Executive Is that session. correct? We do. Okay, so we're going into executive session um, according to MGL uh, C thirty A section twenty one A. Is that two? Two. Two, two? two, to discuss strategy and preparation for negotiations with the Lunenburg Education Association, not to return to public, public session. session. I wrote over it. All in um, favor? All roll in favor? Vote. Roll call. Oh, oh. Yes. Wendy Bertrand. Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you, everybody, for. Thank you.